let's investigate a problem that's similar to one that we've seen before. Let's try to find a formula for the number of small squares in the following stacks that look a little like buildings. Like before, we can simply go through and count the squares by hand, seeing that there's 1, 5, 14, 30, 55, and 91 in the pictured stacks. Also like before, we see that this problem can be tackled recursively as the first stack sits inside the second stack, and the second stack sits inside the third stack, and the third stack sits inside the fourth stack, and so on. This means that the nth stack has the number of squares in the n minus first stack plus the bottom stack, and therefore we just need to count how many squares there are in the bottom stack. This picture looks a little bit more straightforward as we see that what we have in the bottom stacks are the successive square numbers. And therefore, s sub n is equal to s n minus 1 plus n squared. Realizing that the very first stack, the zero stack, has zero squares, we see that s sub n is equal to the sum of the first n squares. Can we find a closed formula for this sum? Unfortunately, we can't use the techniques that we've seen before because i squared is neither arithmetic nor geometric. One way to find such a sum is to try to find an appropriate visual representation. Let's use the stacks of squares that we've seen as a visualization for the sum of the first n squares. For our purposes, we'll just use the case n equals 4. We can use one copy of the stack to lay out a certain kind of tower with a base that's 1 by 7, the next level 2 by 5, the next level 3 by 3, the next level, or the final level in this case, is a 4 by 1. We can then use another copy of the stack to put over on the side like this, giving us two total copies. And finally, we can use a third copy of the stack on the left side like this, so that three total copies of the sum of the first four squares fills in this rectangle. The base of this rectangle is two times four plus one, and the height of this rectangle, or the length of this rectangle, is one plus two plus three plus four. Therefore, we see that 3 times the sum of the first 4 squares is equal to 2 times 4 plus 1 times 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. In general, this pattern continues. 3 times the sum of the first n squares is equal to 2n plus 1 times the sum of the first n natural numbers. We can use this along with the formula that we already found for the sum of the first n natural numbers to see that the sum of the first n squares is equal to 2n plus 1 times n times n plus 1 over 6. When we simplify, we get that this formula is given by 1 3rd n cubed plus 1 half n squared plus 1 6 n. This is a polynomial of degree 3. I wonder if there's a way to discover this numerically. Let's generalize what we did when we studied arithmetic sequences. Given any sequence a sub n, we can define the sequence of first differences, denoted by capital delta of a, to be given by the formula delta a of n equals a n minus a n minus 1 for n greater than or equal to 1. We can visualize this as follows. We see that the first difference sequence is obtained by subtracting two successive terms. So the first term is a1 minus a0, the second term is a2 minus a1, the third term is a3 minus a2, the fourth term is a4 minus a3, and so on so that the nth term is a n minus a n minus 1. This is the sequence of first differences. Let's find the sequence of first differences of the arithmetic sequence 7n plus 1, as given here. We list out the sequence, and then to build the sequence of first differences, we go through and we subtract successive terms. So the first term is 8 minus 1. The second term is 15 minus 8. The third term is 22 minus 15. The fourth term is 29 minus 22, and so on so that the nth term is 7n plus 1 minus the quantity 7n minus 6. If we go through and simplify, we see that each of these terms is actually 7, and this meshes with what we saw when we studied arithmetic sequences. The first differences is a constant sequence. Let's look at another example where the first differences are not constant, and let's look at the sequence that is given here by b sub n. Again, we compute the sequence of first differences by subtracting successive terms. So the first term in the first differences is 1 minus 0, the second term is 4 minus 1, the third term is 10 minus 4, the fourth term is 20 minus 10, 
and the fifth term in this case is 35 minus 20. We can continue this process. We can also simplify to see that this is the sequence 1, 3, 6, 10, and 15. Have we seen this sequence before? Do you think we can use that to figure out the formula for b sub n? The difference operator delta is the discrete analog of the derivative, and just like the derivative, we can repeat the process. So let's see visually what happens if we repeatedly apply the difference operator. Consider again the stacks that we saw at the beginning of this video, where we have 1, 1 plus 4, 1 plus 4 plus 9, and so on, stacks. In this case, we have stacks of circles. The first differences visually takes the objects and produces the set of objects that are just the base squares. So we took an object that is basically three-dimensional and replaced it with an object that is basically two-dimensional. When we repeat the process again of first differences, we end up with these gnomon-shaped objects. But it turns out that each of these elbow-shaped objects can be straightened out into a line. And so we took a two-dimensional object and replaced it with a one-dimensional object. Finally, if we repeat the first differences one more time, we get something striking. The first differences of that sequence is the constant sequence. So after we did the third differences of the sequence we were interested in, we got a constant sequence. The geometry was supposed to help with the intuition, but we can do this exact same process numerically. So we can take the sequence that we had, 0, 1, 5, 14, 30, 55, and so on, and we can fill in a table with the sequence in the first row, the first differences in the second row, the second differences in the third row, and the third differences in the fourth row, and we see that the third differences are in fact constant. We always get a value 2. Notice in this table that each entry is the difference of the entry directly above it and directly above and to the left. Recall that the closed form that we found for SN using geometry was a degree 3 polynomial, and now we see that the sequence has its third differences as a constant sequence. Are the two appearances of the number 3 coincidental? If a sequence has a closed form given by a polynomial, we can use the sequences of kth differences to find the actual formula for the polynomial. So given a sequence a sub n, the sequence of kth differences, denoted by delta raised to the k, is defined recursively by delta of k of a is just the delta operator applied to delta of k minus 1. From this, we say that a sequence a sub n is delta k constant if k is the least positive integer such that delta k of a is a constant sequence. The major theorem is that the closed formula for a sequence is a degree k polynomial if and only if the sequence is delta k constant. Let's apply this theorem to an example. Let's determine if the sequence d sub n given here is given by a polynomial closed formula. We can take the sequence and build the table of first differences in the first row and second differences in the second row and third differences in the third row. Sure enough, we see that the third differences is a constant sequence. This means that the sequence we started with is delta 3 constant, and that means that d sub n is given by a degree 3 polynomial. It's amazing that the theorem tells us that this is a degree 3 polynomial, but that leads to another question. Can we actually find the polynomial formula for this sequence? Here's the idea. We know that there are going to be constants a, b, c, and d, with d sub n equal to a n cubed plus b n squared plus c n plus d, because this is the general formula for a degree 3 polynomial. We can use this proposed closed formula and plug in the value n equals 0 to get this equation here for d sub 0. We can plug in n equals 1 and get this equation for d sub 1. We can plug in n equals 2 and get this equation for d sub 2. And we can plug in n equals 3 to get this equation for d sub 3. But from the table of values or the original sequence, we know that d sub 0 is 0, d sub 1 is 2, d sub 2 is 8, and d sub 3 is 20. This has given us a system of four equations with four unknowns, a, b, c, and d. There are lots of techniques to solve this kind of problem, and you will learn them in a linear algebra class. But for our purposes, we can simply go to a computer algebra system, such as Sage Math Cell. Here are two lines of code implemented in the Sage Math Cell that solve the system of equations with four unknowns. From this, Sage produces the solution that we're looking for. We see that we have a must be a third, b is one, c is two thirds, and d is zero. That means that the formula for the sequence we were interested in is d sub n equals one third n cubed plus one n squared plus two thirds n plus zero. This process is known as polynomial fitting. It will uncover any polynomial sequence.
let's finish by revisiting the sum of squares and using the numerical process of polynomial fitting to find a formula that we already know. Remember that we want to find the formula for the number of squares in the following stacks. We know that our formula can be represented as the sum of the first n squares. We also computed the table of first differences, second differences, and third differences, and realized that the third differences was a constant sequence. Therefore, we know we have a degree 3 polynomial. We can plug in n equals 0, n equals 1, n equals 2, and n equals 3 to get a system of four equations with four unknowns, a, b, c, and d. Once again, we can revisit the Sage Math cell, put in the information that we know right here, and ask it to find the coefficients. In this case, we see that the coefficients are a is 1 3rd, b is 1 half, c is 1 6th, and d is 0. So the formula for the sum of the first n squares is equal to 1 3rd n cubed plus 1 half n squared plus 1 6th n. We used polynomial fitting to find the sum of squares formula and that matched the same formula we found using a geometric representation.